a videotape performing his rendition of You Are My Sunshine. I was so impressed with it that I asked him to come on my show. Please welcome five-year-old cutie patootie, Max Friedman! <laughs> See ya! Thanks. So when you made the tape, did you think you'd get to be on this show? Yeah. Yeah. So if, you're not, if you don't become an opera singer when you grow up, what are you going to be besides an opera singer? Well, I'm, I'm going to be an opera singer and a wrestler. A wrestler? <laughs> Who's your favorite wrestler? My addiction is wrestling. I'm everything you want to be. Oh, I'm the cult of personality. Nobody in WWE knew what to do with them. Like Mussolini and Kennedy. I'm the cult of personality. You're not straight edge like me. That just means I'm better than you. I was the most pissed off guy on the planet. You know, so many straws that broke the proverbial camel's back. I do not love this anymore. I'm fucking sick. I'm fucking hurt. I'm fucking confused. And I don't want to do it anymore. Do you think there's ever a chance we'll see you back in a squared circle? No, no. Here's me with uh, one of my faves, CM Punk, uh, as a kid. I'm better than you, and you know it. I don't want to wrestle anymore. When are you coming back is always a lot better question than when are you going the fuck away. Because I'm better than you and you know it. I am, I am nervous. Possibly for me, the most important thing I'm going to say right now, and this is for everybody at home, this is for everybody who bought a ticket, this is for everybody in the back. If at all through my journey, any of my personal choices or decisions related to my life made you feel disappointed or let down, let me just say, let me just say, I understand if you all try to understand that I was never going to get healthy physically, mentally, spiritually, or emotionally staying in the same place that got me sick in the first place. August 13th, 2000.
2005 was my last match in Ring of Honor and I famously came out with tears in my eyes. I knew I was leaving a place that I love and it was a home and I knew where I was going. It wasn't going to be easy for a guy like me. August 13th, 2005, I left professional wrestling. August 20th, 2021. I'm back. What do you want to do for this company? You're supposed to say, I want to be the AEW champion. So that's Russell speak. But in, in Phil Brooks' heart, what do you want to do for this company? Man, I, I, I've done, I've literally done everything, you know, except come back and tell the story that I want to tell my way. Right. You know, I don't know what's going to happen. I know I'm going to be as prepared as I can be. And let's see if I can hang with these kids. Darby's been doing his homework on CM Punk. Darby willingly put himself in jeopardy and very nearly paid the price. still go? Does CM Punk still have what it takes? Can CM Punk still be the best in the world? I hear people tell me that I need to be mad and I need to be pissed off and they want the old CM Punk. But be careful what you wish for. You are looking at the guy that checks all the boxes inside this ring on this microphone. I am easily, easily the most complete pro wrestler on the planet. Because nobody in that locker room is nearly as good as me. Nobody in that locker room is on my level. Well, somebody just might have something to say about that statement. Well, well, well. Okay, 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 okay. Hey, Maxwell. Talk about disrespectful, Excalibur. You really hurt my feelings last week. I extended out my hand like a gentleman. And you really hurt my feelings, man. I mean, it was almost as bad as the time you quit, took your ball, and went home like a little bitch. You didn't want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with me on the stick punk? Well, too bad. Because I'm about to verbally finish you quicker than your UFC career. I'm so disappointed in you. But let's not start there. Let's 
show our guest a little bit of Chicago hospitality. I want to thank you first and foremost for last week. You introduced yourself to me. That's what a proper young man is supposed to do to their elders. And I had no idea your first name was Maxwell. This entire time, I thought MJF stood for my jealous fan. Look at me, Maxwell, I'm in your head. Probably has a lot to do with the fact that there's a poster of me on your wall. Okay, settle down, settle down, settle down. You know, Punky, that was really solid. I mean, really creative stuff. You know, it was almost what I wanted. Come to think of it, that phrase, almost what I wanted, kinda perfectly encapsulates your whole entire run here thus far, don't you think? What happened to the guy I grew up on, man? What happened to the renegade, the ass kicker, the outsider? Cause you might as well be coming out here preaching hustle, loyalty, and respect. In the other company, these people looked at you like a cult hero because they felt you were held down. You should have been utilized and showcased as the number one guy. And now here you are. You have all the opportunity to prove these people right. But can you? I know what eats you up inside. It's the fact that after all your hard work, all your blood, sweat, tears, and sacrifice you've given this sport, deep down you know it, and these people know it. Your whole career, You've been nothing more than second best. You were never quite up to snuff, were you? And I can assure you, now that you're standing in my ring, in my company, things will be no different because you may claim to be the best in the world, but I'm better than you. And you know it! There's some truth in what you just said. A little bit, scared. Coming back after seven years, a little bit. See, I'm not gonna lie, not even to you. I certainly never lie to these people. I didn't know if these people would remember me. I didn't know if these people would care. I didn't know if I still had it. But trust me, I'm not scared any longer. Certainly not scared of you. Because the timing might not match up. But I was selling out Madison Square Garden when you were marking out for Rosie O'Donnell. You talk too much. Yeah, just like me back in the day, except I always backed it up. And you can't back up shit without your backup. FTR, Sean Spears. Wardlow, that's how you get things done around here. And I never mention you in interviews because I never had to. I looked at AEW and I said, wow, that's the place I want to be. That's the place I want to test myself. And I went for the heart and soul of AEW, Darby Allen. And boy, that just chews you up, doesn't it? Last time we were here in Chicago, and hell yeah, I'm happy to be here I gave everybody free ice cream bars. The only thing I can think that's a better welcome back gift than that is punching you and your little needle dick right here, right now. surprised that he would roll under and leave? CM Punk, you're yesterday's news. You were merely a distraction for my ultimate goal, and that is for me to hold Pretty Platinum. Starting next week, I myself am going to start ranking up. Why? Because my name is Maxwell Jacob Friedman, and I'm better than you. So hey, I understand if MJF is afraid, 
If MJF is scared, if he don't want none, he doesn't have to have none. I never wanted to mess with MJF, but he found out the hard way that on this mic, that in this ring, even at commentary, nobody can touch me. And if he wants to climb that ladder and get some W's to get to AEW Gold, well, I imagine sooner or later, I'll see him again in this ring. But it'd be a real shame if somebody interfered with his quest for gold. Oh, come on now, CM Punk and MJF running from Punk. That is golden ball he's running. CM Punk. And boy, what the hell? That's a little surprising. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this match as a result of a disqualification, Captain Sean T. Oh, MJF, oh, damn it. he just got a this is tremendous. This is your future. This happens every single time you step into the ring until you step in the ring with me, you little bitch. Is that right? Yeah? You want a piece of me, punk? You want the match? You want the goddamn match? Well, listen here, you son of a bitch. Next week, it's gonna be CM Punk versus Wardlow. Bring on Wardlow eventually. You're gonna run out of people to hide behind. Charging in with that running knee strike. Oh, wait a second, he took his eye off his opponent for a moment. Oh. The power bomb. Count that one up for a assist to MJF. This could be the first blemish on CM Punk's record of his AEW career. Oh, yes. Oh, no. And here we go. A third power bomb. And now Wardlow, really, the power bomb simply oh, looked for a fourth. Are you kidding me? Number five! What the hell? Five consecutive power bombs by Wardlow. It's gonna be over. No, 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 What are you talking about? I want more is what he's saying. This is bad news for CM Punk, guys. Yeah, and is Wardlow having second thoughts? Wardlow, again! Oh, man. What happened here? MJF wants Wardlow to take out CM Punk, so there's no possibility yeah. of Punk and MJF meeting inside the ring. Hey, hey! What? Oh, MJF clearing up the timekeeper's table. I mean, right now, CM Punk is dead weight. Wardlow looks disgusted. Voice up CM Punk, and the, oh, the power bump through the table! Oh, CM Punk is getting dismantled. I think can't even get to his feet. See him pump. This is where Audrey's got to sit. Oh, wait a second, Punk! He's on cradle! Two! Three! for this for a long time. Spears, the man that's been tasked with keeping Wardlow in line. But it looks like even Spears is losing control. You got a food victory over an oak tonight. Well, guess what? You ain't winning next week. No, I'm gonna personally make sure next week you take your first L in AEW. Next week, it's CM Punk versus Sean Spears. I'm the guy that Max sends to ensure that a message is delivered and more importantly, understood. So Punker, all ears, baby. You're not in here with a guy who's a one move wonder with a couple of years experience under his belt. You're in here with a 20 year veteran who is pound for pound, one of the sharpest professional wrestlers on this planet today. You can't hang anymore and I've realized that.
It's a dream match. It's something these people have grown impatient to see. They want the match right now. These people are frothing at the mouth for CM Punk versus MJF. They want it. Or at least they think they do. After I win, you people are finally going to get to see the real CM Punk. The CM Punk who loses his fake smile the second he doesn't get what he wants. The CM Punk who blames all of his failures on everyone else but himself. Truth is, he left all of you and he left all the fans who loved him and supported him when he was scheduled to make an appearance right here in Cleveland, Ohio, back in 2014. All those chants aren't gonna stop him from turning his back on you again and then crying about it on a podcast. A podcast that you listen to because you're a fan. You pay to see me. You pay to stand in line to get my picture. You stand in line to get my autograph and how dare you try to put it on these people. I've made decisions. I stand by every single one of them. And these people, they don't love me because I win. They don't hate me because I lose. They love me because I get back up and I try. Oh, you always get back up, huh? Yeah, I always get back up. Oh, okay. How about we test that real quick? MJF bringing the back up. Of course he is. Oh, wait, Sean Spears from behind. The chairman coming from behind a typical MJF-led scenario. It's a, a three-on-one assault right now in Wardlow inside the ring. They're gonna soften him up for that, that symphony, I bet. They could be trying to take Punk out of next week. Man, this is really bad. Oh, that's steel across the spine of CM Punk. Thanks How about you get up now, Punk, huh? Huh? How about you get up now, you dumb son of a bitch? Oh, CM Punk not backing down. Oh, but the right hand. Get up! Power bomb. Power bomb. You got three other guys in the ring. Can they not power bomb? Power bomb somebody? Come on. And nobody has quite the destructive force of Wardlow. MJ with a big grin on his face. Wardlow. Power oh. bomb. Shine first on that steel chair lying in the middle of the ring. Seven days before these two men fight in Chicago next Wednesday night. Oh, come on. This, that's cool. That's this, really no, this cool is right brutal. there. This is. That's it right this there. It's revolting. Man. It is so apropos that the same place your journey started will be the same place it ends. I'll see you in Chicago!
will continue. The right thing to do. Oh, wait a Look at this. Oh, 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 wait a second. CM Punk. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hey, hey, yeah, this is. Take a Pepsi plunge. He hasn't done that move in 17 years. Oh, oh God. Wardlow. Now, this is most interesting because I don't know exactly where Wardlow's allegiance lies. We saw how slow to act Wardlow was last week, and now getting eye to eye with CM Punk. Wait, wait. He walked away. Punk looking over his shoulder. He doesn't trust Wardlow either. Look out behind. Think about this. MJF! Was that the ring? MJF covers! No, no, no! no. to the ring, he hails from the most magical place in the world, Plainview, Long Island, New York. Oh, for crying out He is the three-time Dynamite Diamond Ring champion, the man who's never been beaten clean in the middle of the ring and is undefeated in AEW, the man who pins shoulders on mats and bangs all the rats, the king of all elite wrestling, the undefeated, undisputed, uncrowned AEW world champion. Ladies and gentlemen, Please give a warm round of applause to the man who's better than you, and you know it, Maxwell Jacob Friedman, MJF. I think I made it crystal clear last week that I'm the best wrestler on the planet. Not Kenny Omega, not Brian Danielson, not Adam Cole, not Heyman. No, no, right now you're looking at the best in the world. After last week, I proved I'm better than Brett in Canada, I'm better than Piper in Portland, and I'm damn sure better than CM Punk in Chicago. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. Look at this. This is great. I'm, I gotta go talk to this guy. I'm a little bit of an island amongst myself. I don't like to ask for help. Luckily, today, I've learned from my mistake a couple of weeks ago. You bunch of jackasses like to pick your spots and beat up one guy. Today, I got some friends. Oh. 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 Darby oh. Allen and oh. Sting oh. here. Sting. Take your jackets off, get your dress shoes off. This is gonna go one of two ways. I'm either gonna get what I want, or I'm gonna come down here with my friends and I'm gonna beat it out of you. I want a rematch. I just beat you twice. You don't deserve Max. a rematch. Max, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the guy that beat me in Chicago, Wardlow. And big man, listen to me, listen to me good. You can be on the end of the beating these guys are about to receive, or you can grow some balls and you can leave these jerks. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wardlow, Wardlow hangs around us, not just because he's under contract with me, but because he's our best friend. Everybody knows that. Just shut up, Max, give me a rematch. Hey, Punker, if in the condition you're in, you can beat the greatest tag team of all time, FTR, with any tag partner you're choosing, I'll give you a match against me, any match, any time, anywhere. However, it can't be Tweedledum or Tweedledip shit over there. Good luck finding a partner in the locker room who doesn't hate your guts! <laughs> oh my god! We're thinking about this guy! The blue-eyed bastard! From Cincinnati, Ohio, weighing 231 pounds, Whoa, wait a sec, Punk. He's got a GTS and Paradigm Shift. They hit it. One, two, three. If you don't know by now, you should. My name is C.M. Punk. And what I am is straight edge. I'm drug free. I'm alcohol free. And that means I'm better than you. 
Those words I spoke for the first time over 20 years ago, and they became the foundation of my career. And I can sit here in Nashville, Tennessee, and feel pride that that foundation grew into such a career that I have managed to inspire the next generation of professional wrestling. Some of them are sitting in the locker room right now. Some of them became wrestlers because of me. And then there's MJF. He tries to walk like me, to talk like me. He could never think like me. Maxwell Jacob Friedman fancies himself Piper in Portland. Brett in Calgary and Punk in Chicago, when in reality he's just shitty little Max from shitty little Long Island. The foundation of Max's career has been a ring that he has used to beat opponent after opponent. And it's a ring that he won with help from other people. But when he beat me in my hometown, you would think that I would be furious, that I would be mad. But to tell you the truth, Max, I'm proud of you. Where you stray from the path is you fail to retain the knowledge of the lessons that you are being taught. We need Max to learn some lessons. So I thought back on the toughest matches of my career, matches where I've literally left pieces of myself in the ring. And I think Piper in Portland, Piper in Portland. Max, you wanna be tethered to Piper so bad, you're gonna have to be tethered to me. And two days removed from the Hallmark holiday, Valentine's Day, I'm left without a Valentine, and it's very poetic that I get to ask you the question, Maxwell Jacob Friedman, will you be my Valentine? And I know Max is backstage right now pissing his pants, because nobody wants to be in a dog collar match. Sometimes they take years off your life. I promise you they take years off your career, but that's the goal. That's the lesson you need to be taught, Max. So I'm gonna ask you to come out here right now because there's one more thing I need to tell you and I wanna look you directly in your eyes when I say it. I want you to take it all in, Max. And I wanna leave you with this. This picture. You see it, Max? I'm sure you remember it well. Possibly the greatest day of your life, and to me, it was Friday. <laughs> Sunday, March 6th, Orlando, Florida, Revolution pay-per-view is gonna be the worst day of your life, and to me, it's just gonna be Sunday. The price you paid to see me on this day pales in comparison to the price you will pay on March 6th. The canvas I sit on is not going to be stained with your shitty spray tan. It's going to be stained with your blood. Unnerved. Oh, and he's walking out. You know, I I used to love CM Punk too. You know, CM Punk, he showed a photograph last week and he said that for him it was just another Friday. And yes, you know what? That day meant more to me than just a Friday. That day meant everything to me. Let me go back a little bit in time, 2007, I'm 11 years old. I got a litany of learning disabilities. Every single day in school for me was hell. But the one thing I was good at was football. I tried out for the team, I was one of 
oh, I don't know, only two Jewish kids that tried out. I actually, the coach decided to start me as a middle linebacker, and that meant everything to me because for once, I thought I'd fit in. And then the next day at school, I'm walking the hallway of my school, and I see my teammates walking up to me. And I'm excited because for once in my life, I actually think I'm gonna make friends. And they look angry. And in their hands, they're holding rolls of quarters. And all of them decided to throw the quarters at me as hard as they physically could. And they said, pick it up, Jew boy, pick it up. I went home and I cried and I cried and I cried, but finally I stopped because I realized today's Friday. And that means tonight I get to meet my hero CM Punk at an autograph signing. That day meant everything to me, and when I went back home, I made a promise to myself that I was gonna be just like my hero CM Punk. I wasn't gonna be afraid to speak up for myself. I, this five foot nothing ADD riddle Jew boy, was gonna become the best in the world. Fast forward, December 2013, I've gotten stronger, I've gotten faster, I've got football scholarship offers coming at me left and right, but I don't give a damn because all I want to be is like my hero CM Punk. I want to be a professional wrestler. January 2014, you leave me. When I needed you most, when I believed in you, you left me, you left all of us. That's when I realized if the best in the world couldn't do it, why could some dumb, five foot nothing ADD riddled Jew boy? So I went to college like a good boy. I packed my bags, I drove off, and I quit on my dreams. And I buried my happiness deep down. I buried my dreams deep down. Until one day, I'm in my dorm room, I'm scrolling on Instagram, and there's an account called The Wrestling Classic. And there is a photograph of CM Punk shaking hands with Brian Danielson. I was livid. I packed my bags, I got in my car, and I made a promise to myself that day. I made a promise that I was gonna become the best in the world in spite of CM Punk. I made a promise that whatever outcasted kid at school who was getting bullied had me to watch on his TV screen and I made a promise that I wasn't God gonna leave him high and dry just like you did, punk! You gutless coward! You can choke me with the chain! You can whip me with the chain! You can make me bleed buckets! But I will not quit because if I quit, then I'd be no better than you. And we all know that's not the case because my name is Maxwell! Jacob Friedman, and I'm better than you. And you know it. The aforementioned Mr. Punk wow. making his way to the ring after very emotional words. I, I... I used to wake up every morning, splash water on my face, and I'd look at myself in the eyes in the mirror, and I'd ask myself, am I the bad guy? I never really had an answer, and of course, I don't truly believe that everybody thinks that they're the bad guy in their own story. I mean, up until a week ago, I was certain that Max was the bad guy. When I came here, Max, stood in front of me, he introduced himself to me, and he stuck his hand out, and I didn't shake his hand. Now, am I to blame for all these horrible things that Max did? Am I Dr. Frankenstein, and he's the monster? Listen, I think everybody has to take responsibility for their own actions. But I don't think right now there's anything else that I can say that's gonna be more impactful than something that I can do. 
And in order to do that, I need Max to come out here, and I don't want, I don't want anybody but Max from last week to come out here. Which MJF are we gonna get here? There's no telling. So here's the thing, Max. I've done horrible things in my life. I used to be you. And I'm here to tell you right now that all that hate, it's not just gonna keep you warm. It's gonna burn you up. And right now, this is bigger than me. This is bigger than you. This is bigger than wrestling. This right here is about that 11-year-old kid who's at home watching right now, and he looks up to you the same way you looked up to me. And I might be wrong, but I woke up this morning and I splashed water on my face and I looked at myself in the mirror and I asked myself a question. Are you the good guy? And I finally had an answer. And that answer is, I sure am trying. Think about MJF as a young kid looking up to CM Punk, and now finally, this cathartic moment after all those years of just hatred, a disappointment in the heart of MJF. This is absolutely premeditated. And that proves it right there. And he's calling out Wardlow and Sean Spears. And Wardlow gave him the ring. Oh, the diamond, diamond ring. Right in the hand. Oh, my God, this kid has gone psychotic. This is one of the worst things I've ever witnessed since we started AEW. You stupid, stupid old man. I'm a snake. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he doesn't exist. I'm gonna show you and all these mindless sheep that I am the devil himself. Not many oh. Oh. Screw that here. Oh, come on, Spear. Few people are gonna understand that being in this much pain makes certain people feel so very alive. I think you understand, Max, and if you don't, on March 6th, you will. You are going to find out exactly what you think you already know, that CM Punk is the master, and I know exactly who the I am. You wanna call me PG Punk? You wanna pretend like I'm not that same guy? You want that same guy that you grew up idolizing? Congratulations, Maxwell, Jacob, Friedman, but you're not ready. And on March 6th, I'm gonna walk you like a dog. I'm gonna beat you. I will become a monster to fight the monsters of the world. Because I'm CM Punk, and I'm better than you. Introducing from Plainview, Long Island, New York, weighing 226 pounds, he is better than the best in the world, Maxwell Jacob Friedman, MJF. And his opponent, from Chicago, Illinois, weighing 218 pounds, Jeff getting all the suited up. The dog collar will stay around his neck. I hope Paul puts a couple extra notches and tightens it up real tight. So there's the scene is set. Can't run, kid. You can't run. Max, but Max just whipped the chain into the eyes of CM Punk. But Punk bringing Max. You can only go so far. 
And look at Punk's face. It is a crimson mask. Premeditated assault. You're the fucking mother. How about you tell these people you don't care about them? How about you tell these people you want to quit? Just like you quit on me! Say it! Say it! Eat shit, Max. He's calling for the ring. Well, the best man didn't bring the ring. He can't find it. He just brought MJF in. Boom. MJF! Listen to the cheer of the fans. Fans love it. They love what Wardlow has finally done. Punk with a firm grip on the dog collar. Punk tees off at the ring. The cover. It's over. You want violence? You want blood? You're tenacious, but after I stand on your throat and I listen to your death rattle and I hear the air escape from your lungs, you will know my name is CM 